Hi Neil again. <clears throat> I'm on a timber survey today and basically they've had a problem with rainwater penetration which you can see has had a significant effect on the internal building fabric. The rainwater has been coming down this corner and obviously just around here and you can see you know where they've got some uh, timber grounds fixed to the wall. We've got evidence Oh, we've got evidence. It, it, we've got wet rot and also a bit of wood boring weaver infesting the timber. But the timber grounds, just soft wood grounds that have been fixed to the wall. But it, if it's one of these, you know, a lot of the time, a lot of severe, a lot of people send me photographs asking, do I know if it's wet rot or dry rot uh, when they've got a, they've discovered something in their property? You can see we've got a fungal growth coming down the stood partition. Now, they have done some remedial work to eliminate the source of the water on roof level, which has been travelling down. So this fungus, the timbers, the, the moisture content is, well, it's relatively low, it's around about 20%, but I could imagine it was a lot worse when the rainwater penetration was active. But obviously now what we've got is the remnants. We've got this fungal growth growing on the surface of the timbers. Now, the, the, the timbers, the moisture content, as I say, is relatively no, low now. Now, a simple little test, because some people think, is it, is it wet rot or is it dry rot? But the, actual, the fungus itself is pretty dry. It's, it's largely dried out. So what I've done, I pinch a piece from here. So there you are, that's the, the mycelium, which is just a, a mass of hyphae. I'm trying to see if I can get a better light somewhere. It's uh, right, that'll do. So you can see it there. Now what I'm going to do is, the, between my fingers, this is not very scientific, but it's a good little indicator. I'm going to just flick that around. Now what happens is dry rot mycelium, when it's dried out, it becomes brittle. So you wouldn't be able to do that because what, what would happen is it would just snap. <clears throat> so it's a very handy little tip that if the, if the fungus has dried out and the source of the water has been eliminated, then you can do that. So what you find is wet rot, the mycelium, or sorry, the hyphae, you can flick them around, you can bend them, twist them, do what you want with them, and largely they'll remain intact. If it's dry rot, you tend to find that the, the, myfe, the mycelium, the hyphae, will become brittle. The strands will become brittle, whereas you can see that's fairly flexible. There you are. And then I've dropped it on the floor somewhere, but it's still pretty much intact. It sounds, it, it just, it's a, it's a very, very quick little video, but it's just a handy little tip. If you see a, a, a historic outbreak of fungal decay and you're uncertain as to whether you're looking at a wet rot or dry rot situation, because some wet rots can look very similar to a dry rot outbreak, especially poria, fibroporia. So just, you know, if you can find some of these strands, uh, which obviously have dried out, which they have here and on here. What you can do, peel a strand off, peel some off, and just play around with it. Just There you are. Is it flexible? If it remains flexible when it's dried out, you might want to take it home or take it back to your office, leave it for a few days just to make sure it has dried out, and then try exactly the same thing. If it's flexible, you're normally talking wet rot. If it's, if it's brittle when once dry, you're looking at dry rot. I hope that helps. Just a simple little tip. Okay, thanks a lot now. Bye-bye.